Welcome to the With Pride and Grit podcast, a show dedicated to helping you navigate a season of transition in your life. I'm your host, Jen Pasquale, and as a 16-year military spouse, I know firsthand how challenging life's transitions can be. I also know it's an opportunity for growth, discovery, and new beginnings. In this season of With Pride and Grit, we're sharing stories of military spouses who are or have successfully transitioned to civilian life. We'll also hear from experts who can offer valuable insights about transition resources available to support a spouse's journey. Whether you're just starting the transition process or already well on your way, this podcast is for you. We hope to provide you with the knowledge and inspiration to make the most of this new chapter in your life. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome back to another With Pride and Grit podcast episode. I'm really excited to talk more about entrepreneurship. We did this earlier in the season and it went really well. You guys love that episode that we had with the Military Spouse Chamber of Commerce. And so this is going to be really a great bookend to that, being able to talk to Anna Blanche Rabe from IVMF. And she's going to tell us a lot about the programs that IVMF IVMF has that can support your entrepreneurship journey. Anna, I'm so excited to have you help us wrap up this season and just really excited to bring a little bit more about IVMF into our resources part of the podcast. So thank you for joining us. I'm really glad to be here. This is, it's fun. It's fun to talk about how you create a life for yourself and your family. And that's really what entrepreneurship's about. I love it. What a great start. So why don't you, for folks who don't know you, if you could just walk us back a step and help us understand your journey and connect it to how you ended up now working in the role that you do with IVMF. Yeah. So it's so interesting because so many military spouses, I do have a professional background. Over 30% of us have graduate degrees and I'm one of them. I have a law degree which is great. I really enjoyed my career. I worked for different universities in different countries and uh, found myself getting married almost 10 years ago and in New Mexico, where I very quickly figured out that I wasn't going to be able to practice law. It's hard for a lot of military spouses as we move around with professions. And although so much has been done to improve licensing portability, uh, that is still a challenge for, for quite a few of us, especially those that receive their training outside the US like myself. So it can be a top 10 university in the world and that doesn't necessarily help you. So I, you have to get creative. We all do. So I worked in the nonprofit sector for a little while, leading a children's regional legal services nonprofit. That gave me some exposure to some areas of running an organization that I hadn't experienced. And that was the financial side, which would probably be my sticking point to starting a business at that point. And so then we got reassigned, we had an assignment at PCS also in the same state. And I was like, really, are you kidding me? I still can't do what I'm trained to do. But that was the beginning of what am I going to do next? And how am I going to create a life that will allow me to be with and travel with and be with, with my spouse, with my Air Force active duty Air Force service member. And so uh, I started to explore what does that mean? And I took my specific skill set, which is someone who's trained in both the law and trained to teach people how to write and learn and read. And I created a communications consulting company that served law firms. Hmm. And I, uh, I know, right? Like we all have this weird intersection of our skills. We all have that. For sure. So maybe that you have a specific passion, but that you can combine it with your background or your skill set. And that's kind of where the magic is for entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. when you're the best person for that thing, right? So I started looking around, how do I learn how to grow and build? Because I knew I didn't know everything about running a business. The secret is you can get a professional degree, but they're not teaching you how to start your own practice. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> So I had heard a little bit about the Danilo Institute for Veterans and Military Families at Syracuse. And I was intrigued because he was a nonprofit organization that was so embedded in the military community, but also had the backing of a university. And that's, it is a little unique. We kind of joke that we're the nerds of the military nonprofit space. We kind of are. And that's okay. Because I discovered this whole range at the time, a whole range of programs that supported military spouse and military veterans and military family members who wanted to start their own companies and grow them. 
And so I applied for a program called VWISE, which mm-hmm. stands for Veteran Women Igniting the Spirit of Entrepreneurship. It's open to military spouses and veterans. And I should say here, I'm also an Australian Army veteran. So I kind of get to pick both. <laughs> of course, for most programs in the US, they're not going to see me as a veteran, and that's fine. Um, but I found something really interesting at that program with IBMF. I found people who were really serious about providing really high quality resources which made a big difference to me. And I also saw an acknowledgement and awareness of how we could turn our experiences as military family members, military veterans into a selling point. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be something that made business harder for us. Maybe we could turn that into a a superpower, as it were. Mm -hmm. So then how, what was the evolution of you then? So now you are now leading the entrepreneurial arm at IVMF, correct? I am the program manager for the Coalition for Veteran-Owned Business and the Center of Excellence for Veteran Entrepreneurship. Gotcha. Uh, Misty Fox is our is our director of entrepreneurship and small business. Okay. Uh, and she leads twelve programs and three information hubs, and we'll talk about what that looks like here in a minute. I have more than enough to do just leading kind of three different aspects of our work, let alone more than twelve. Well, and I think that's the really interesting thing about IVMF is I feel like it's like this onion, right? There's just another layer and another layer of programming. Every time I feel like I have a handle on what IVMF offers, I find another layer of something else that I didn't know about. Recently, I found, I knew about VWISE, but I found the EVV program that was open to military spouses. And so it's, I think it's so interesting that even someone that I feel like I'm decently informed in this space I'm always, I continue to be surprised at the places that IVMF and the Institute has their hands in, in support of military families. It's really, it's so incredible. So one of the things I think that has, and I think to finish that story, I then continue to run my company for the next eight years, right? I didn't immediately step into working back for IVMF, but I did start to do a little bit of teaching at VWISE again. I've now, I taught a, one of the sessions as part of the Entrepreneur Bootcamp for Veterans or EBV last year on creating value for your customer. EBV is actually the very first program that IVMF offered back in 2007. It's our longest and most consistent program. It's been highly successful. It's small group. We don't usually have more than 30 people in a cohort. So you really get to know the other people that you're in that cohort with. It's creating a peer network, which I think is really valuable. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, it's offered all over the country, not just by Syracuse University. So we have been able to partner with universities around the country, including Texas A&M, UCLA, universities here and around DC. A Bright State is a brand new school that just joined us as an EBV school just now. They've got their first cohort starting in August. All of these are open. We have a rolling application process Mm -hmm. for everything we do. So that if you look, and I know that Jen, you're gonna share the website a little bit later, but don't worry too much if you look at all these programs and feel overwhelmed, because we do have some ways into what we do. You can speak with our enrollments team, if you prefer via email, if you prefer on the phone, and they will step you through where you're at, what makes sense for you and what Mm -hmm. might be next. Because in addition to the EBV that you mentioned, we have a couple of different variations. We have one specifically for caregivers. It's called EBVF, which I think is really powerful because it will give you that chance to be with a cohort of other business owners that maybe are dealing with some of the same challenges that you're dealing with. And that can be super helpful. We've had a number of dependents that have been able to go through EBVF as well, which is a little bit unique. Yeah, that is unique. Yeah, I think maybe one of the reasons why it is a bit of an onion, is partly because intentionally IVMF is for veterans and military families, and the and is not an afterthought. It's Mm -hmm. so baked into everything we do that I think sometimes we forget to point out, hey, you know that everything we do is available to the whole military family. But then also the reason I think you start to find more is over time is because every part of our programming is not just a chance to throw another program. It's an opportunity to take the research, the really heavy duty research that Ivy Map does and create practical outcomes from that. So it, it means that we tend to target what we do very carefully to the cohort of the groups that are participating, which is why I think 
not everybody hears about everything at IVF. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's such an interesting approach that isn't necessarily the norm. I think, and I think in our space, it's so important to really ask your audience what they need, because I think as the military culture changes, as just in, you know, society changes, there are, there's shifts in what support I think individuals need from varying organizations. And if we continue to come at it from our own lens and from what, oh, here's what I would have needed when I went through this, that's not necessarily the lens that's going to land best for what the current audience needs. So having that data backed um, intentionality, I think is really important. And it's probably why I have yet to find anyone who felt like their their time and effort that they invested in an IVMF program wasn't worthwhile. I think there's a correlation between those two things. I think you're right. I, that was one of the things that actually drew me to even wanting to teach. And I then ended up on faculty when we were stationed in Germany and I was teaching Boots to Business, which is now mm -hmm. an SBA program, small mm -hmm. business education program. But you, did you know that IVMF actually developed the, the curriculum for Boots to Business? Not. I so know. one of the reasons why we teach it overseas, we do have the contract with Small Business Administration. But, you know, this idea of we work really hard to develop really high quality curriculum to make sure that what you're learning isn't just yet another sales pitch. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about how we don't own the journey of any entrepreneur that works with us. We're here as a support system. We're here to support and champion you and and part of my role is working with our corporate partners to connect them with military connected businesses. But it's so interesting too, because you have our research and analytics team. So we have all these different pillars that I think you might, which is part of that onion you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. but one of them is our research and analytics team. And so they partner with Blue Star Families every year for the Military Family Life Survey that everybody hears about. It's open right now, everybody. So it is. <laughs> and yep. it will be open, I'm showing this airs. So when, if people have the opportunity to take that, please do. Mm -hmm. The ethics and the way that research is conducted by IVMF, that probably makes us a little different too. Every piece of research that our team does goes through an ethics review board and an ethics review panel. And that's really important to us. We're very careful about how we do things. And so then equally, we have our community services team that works with state governments around the country to start to answer from the lived experience of military family members to say, hey, I know you want to do right by veterans in your state, but are you actually offering the services that are going to support them at a state level across every generation? So I think one of the things both within our entrepreneurship team that I'm really enjoying, because it was a big step to step away from full-time entrepreneurship. It sure. took a lot for me to choose to do that. Yeah. We have this really cool, diverse team. Um, so we we cross a range of generations. We have a range of different military connected experiences or not. We have veterans. We have military spouses. We have spouses of different generations. And we also have a couple of team members who don't have a military background of their own, but they're so committed either because they are a military dependent themselves or one of my team, one of my fellow team members became really committed to this work and wanted to die in IVMF because one of her best friends from high school was killed in action in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And she felt really strongly that she wanted to contribute to this work in the community. And there's this really interesting kind of variety of people that I think makes this work valuable for all of us because we don't all have the answer. We're all looking at it from, we all have different networks. We're all looking at it from different lenses. And so we encourage that in the business owners too. You know, we, we have people who don't even know if they want to be entrepreneurs. Right. Well, and I think that, so I think that's a really important thing as we talk about the journey through transition and, you know, bringing you on is really about helping align you as a resource to spouses who are in that transition season and they're trying to figure out what's next for themselves. Yeah. And so I think it's really important to understand that IVMF has the programming to support you at any point in your journey. So whether you're just barely getting started, there's programming to support that. If you've been in business for a while, but maybe you're struggling to really grow the business the way you want, or to, in my case, grow it so that your service member, when they retire, maybe they are the supplemental and you're becoming more of the primary because you've got this thriving business. So what, no matter what that goal is and anywhere in between, it seems like there's a program somewhere under IVMF's umbrella to help meet you at the stage that you're at. We talk a lot about that. 
How do we meet business owners, entrepreneurs? Very often, I have to tell you, when I first got involved, I didn't even want to call myself an entrepreneur. That was such a foreign word to me. No. And so that's okay. If that's you, we get it. Whether you're not even sure yet you want to be an entrepreneur, we have programs for you to figure out. We have a program called EBV Spark that is open to military mm. spouses, veterans, military connected folks of all kinds. And it is a six week program that will just a short amount of time each week in a cohort help you explore. Do I even want to explore entrepreneurship more? We work closely with the Small Business Administration and Boots to Business to try and allow for the work. We work with a lot of other organizations too. You're someone who's super passionate about hospitality. We might encourage you to look at Dog Tag Bakeries mm -hmm. program and apply for that. It's an excellent program that they're increasingly offering in different parts of the country. You know, we also work with Second Service Foundation who runs amazing mm -hmm. pitch competitions and they are one of our, what we call spokes in our community navigator pilot program. As I already mentioned, we work with more than 13 different universities to provide some of these in-person programming near you. We also have relationships and meet regularly with Bunker Labs and the team mm -hmm. there who are meeting grassroots. So we don't think we're always the answer for every question, but I can say that we are always a good place to start. You can start with us, talk with us. We can always yeah. refer you. Um, so there's, you know, and then at the other end, if you are someone who's like, you know, I've been running this business for a long time. I didn't know you people existed. Like, can you help me? <laughs> right. We have companies that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. who work with us. And they are veteran owned, military spouse owned companies who find value in that connection, I think. I want to go back to something you said before, because I want to make sure that we sort of elevate that so that folks really have an understanding. Because I, this is something I learned this year. You were talking about how there's folks on the team that can, you don't have to know coming in like what you need. You just need to show up and raise your hand and then we will help you. And so I think it's important to paint that picture. So I'll just kind of give an anecdotal for myself because I had applied to VYs um, and the timing, there was, there was an issue sort of with the timing and being gone. And so then I was looking at EBV and I was really struggling with which is the better use of my time given where I am and the time that I have available. And so I was able to talk to someone on the team to just help talk me through it and help me understand, okay, well, this one's completely covered. This one's partially covered. There's a cost for this. There's not a cost for that. Just helping me see what the curriculum differences were, what the cost differences were, and even just the time commitment from my, from me. And they were able to help me really hone in on, okay, in my case, it didn't make sense to do either in that minute. I was going to kind of punt and wait till the fall. And so my intent, I think, is to do VYs in the fall um, in Jacksonville. So I'm hoping to be able to join for that for the first Those time. Those applications are open right now and they'll still be open when, when this goes live. So Okay, that's good to know because we we'll can link that application in, in here Absolutely. as well. But I just would love your kind of anecdotal perspective on why that sort of high touch experience is so important and why folks just don't, they don't need to have the answer in order to raise their hand. So can you talk a little bit more about what you've seen and how that's impacted yeah. spouses' choices? You know, what you are talking about is so not uncommon, which is so exciting to be able to say that. And I, it's partly because we do have an extraordinary enrollments and advising team. It's led by a colleague of mine, Mai, who is amazing. But that is very much how we try to do things, right? So, you know, when you send in, now for VWISE, we often get hundreds and hundreds of applications. And so you might not get an immediate phone call, but you will at least get an email and you'll, and if you have additional questions, absolutely, they will set up a time to chat with you on the phone. The reason for that high touch is actually, we genuinely care about each individual um, person who comes through any of IBMF's programs. In fact, we've had situations lately, whether it's somebody looking at VYs who's come and has ended up with additional needs that actually has, has necessitated referrals to other veterans with permission of the person. We don't do anything without your permission, but, you know, some very basic housing needs and other things. And we were able to, through our community services portion, allow for that referral to also take place. And so, you know, I think part of the reason for that high touch is a recognition that we see you as part of our community. So when when you go through any of IVMF's programs, you become an IVMF alumni. And that is, there's something powerful about that because we have our alumni services 
area of IVMF um, has 49 post-program partners, oh. website design, logo design, intellectual property services, accountants, all sorts of things. And if you're eligible and you meet the requirements, in the last year, we gave away over a million dollars in pro bono services through those incredibly generous support wow. partners. And so that's something that once you've gone through ABV or VWISE, you then become eligible for. And you can imagine, even if you're someone whose business is doing very well, having that additional support or just knowing that you're going to be connected to someone reliable and somebody right. who's been vetted. Because a lot of what we try to do, for example, I also I manage our digital library collection for entrepreneurship. For those who want to do a little more reading, mm. you literally have a library collection you can, re you can find through the website. It's pretty easy to see there where we look at every stage of growing a business and we try to find vetted, curated resources that are useful for you. There is so much noise out there. Let's make sure we're getting you to something good and useful. No, that's outstanding because I think, you know, there's probably someone who is early stage, is just thinking about it and maybe isn't ready to dip their toe in, but to be able to just connect to the resources could be a great sort of starting point. You touched on it a little bit, but I'd love for you to just for clarity kind of walk through um, and it, it may differ by program, so I don't want to make it too complicated, but I know military spouses, absolutely <laughs> open to military spouses. How does IVMF define that after service? Is there a cutoff of any kind? No. Okay. So I think that's probably one of the distinctions is that um, there may be, you know, we handle things often on a case by case. So Absolutely. If you're in a fairly straightforward situation and your eligibility is based on a marriage to someone who has been a prior service member and you've got a DD-214 or an LAS or RAS, which is the veteran version of that, great. If you're somebody who is in perhaps a slightly different situation, i.e. you were formerly married to a service mm -hmm. member or there's something around that, or you're in a long-term partnership with somebody whose military service has impacted your career. That's another way we look at it. Yep. It's just a matter of that's a conversation to have with our enrollments team. And they are very, we do look at each situation case by case, but we try to recognize that there can be lots of things that impact you as a military mm -hmm. family member that aren't straightforward. We all know this, right? Mm -hmm. um, we do, you know, there are the very straightforward situations. We do have, for example, on our website and we do talk about this a lot most of the time we don't have a time limitation time in service limitation so any period of service is fine one of our programs ebv does have a post 9 11 requirement and that's mm -hmm. partly because of how the funding originated but we've made sure that the rest of our programs do not have that limitation um, okay. and so some no. of that is yeah we try really hard to not have that be be a factor and just to recognize that when we say we're about veterans and military families, there's a lot of situations that may occur. So we all know too, that there are people who are going through a discharge, you know, fixing up their discharge status mm -hmm. perhaps for whatever reason. That's something we've also encountered. We have had situations where a veteran may have not had, may have had an other than honorable as a result of dealing with sure. military sexual trauma or something else. Sure. We have absolutely worked with veterans and said, we understand, you know, share only as much as you're comfortable, but I can mm -hmm. promise you our team is so committed to making sure that we support our community that we will look at every case on a case by case basis. Well what I really hear in that is just don't don't self select out. That just, that's you know, what that, I that's that's all it takes. Just yes. raise your hand and say, I would love to be supported in some capacity. What here's my situation, here's you know my history with my service, what's possible and what's available to me. Because it sounds like it's definitely broader than most. And so that I think also makes it such a great place to start because it's, I think sometimes for spouses, if, if you're in maybe one of those divorce situations, or even I hear it a lot too with veteran spouses, where there's this frustration when you cross transition oh, and now yeah, it's not open all these the resources parents. just yeah. drop off the, you know, off the map. Yeah. For you. And I understand that there's only so much funding to go around, but I think it's nice to be able to show up somewhere and not be told no for the first time. And so like IVMF might be a safe place to... <laughs> To sort well, of start you know, that effort. You, you have spoken to my colleague, Karen, and she's certainly someone as a veteran spouse who is a voice, not just within our organization, but within our community more broadly. I think that's important too, right? Mm -hmm. To be in each other to say, hey, don't forget. And personally, we're still active duty, but I can promise you 
it doesn't change how much this impacts your career yeah. afterwards. And I think one of the motivations for entrepreneurship for me was really how do I create and define my own future mm. without my career, my profession being necessarily shaped by the vicissitudes of my husband's career, which that just wasn't something that I felt entirely comfortable with. I think we all have to accept that to some degree or another, that the service member's career ends up shaping, if you're not a service member, it ends up shaping your career and your life because that's the life. But entrepreneurship is something that I think has given, it's given me some extraordinary opportunities and continues to, because that's something that so many people on our entrepreneurship team and broadly within IVMF are able to build their own small businesses mm -hmm. outside of that work. It's something we're all committed to individually. One of, my, one of my colleagues, for example, Anthony Crosby, he's actually in the Onward to Opportunity team with Karen. He actually has a sock company. Yeah. Whether you call it STZY or ZY or not, there's a couple of different ways to say it, but his Socks ended up in the gift bags of the wives and girlfriends of the Super Bowl this year. He's done some really other cool mm -hmm. stuff. But he's an example of someone in-house. We have so many really inspiring military-connected entrepreneurs that I work with. I was speaking with Yusuf Henriquez, who is a Navy veteran, just before I recorded this podcast. And Yusuf has a company called Indie Gene US. It's a remarkable company that utilizes biochemistry to explore how your gene disposition might be negatively impacted by your military service. And he mm -hmm. is working very closely with the VA and others to look for ways in which that might help improve medical treatment for veterans and their families. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the kind of extraordinary people I get to work with every day. But I also get to work with you know, those that are taking over a family business mm. on Main Street in middle Pennsylvania who mm -hmm. are running coffee shops, who are building their own little real estate empires, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too small or too big. Well, and I think it's important to, I think sometimes, and I think I was guilty of this because like you, I resist that entrepreneurial, you know, title, if you will. I default to business owner more often. But I think sometimes we have this idea in our head that entrepreneurs are only serial entrepreneurs, people that move from one project to the next and they're inventors and creators. And there's this profile, if you will, of what it looks like to be an entrepreneur. And I think look, the examples you give really help, I think, drive home this idea that being a business owner, being an entrepreneur is going to look different for everybody, is going to be motivated differently for everyone and it's going to potentially be executed in these own kind of nuanced ways that resources like what IVMF has can help you just figure out your way so that you can, you know, have your journey and do your thing and do it with the things that you love. Ideally, that's why a lot of us go into business for, our, for ourselves is so we can do more of the thing we love in the ways that we want to do it. That's, I feel like that's the goal. I think a lot of the times it absolutely is. And you're right. There's no one way to be an entrepreneur. I will say this, though. The, the data, both from the SBA and the Department of Commerce and the IRS, is actually pretty clear. While the average business owner in the U.S., as a small business owner, has about a 50% chance of going out of business in the first two mm -hmm. years, a military-connected business owner, on the other hand, has an 80% chance of being in business after five years. No kidding. So, although there's no precursor when it comes to education. I, my dad ended up running a company. He didn't graduate high school, right? I love to use him as an example because I have three degrees. I'm working on number four. Okay. Nobody has to look like anybody else. Right. Right? You could look just as much like my dad as you do like me. But actually in the US, one of the only things that really tips the needle when it comes to success as an entrepreneur is a military connection. And I wonder if it's that ability now we joke we don't love that word resilience <laughs> no <laughs> I, and i sometimes i'm like i don't want to be resilient anymore i want life to be easy now yeah. but our ability to adapt our ability to contingency plan our ability to make the best of what we've got and to just follow through that is where our real wins can happen as entrepreneurs 
So if folks wanted to dip their toe in, Anna, what would, what would your advice be for kind of the best place to start that process for them? So the best way is probably just to get a little bit more of a feel. I don't always love sending people to a website, but our ivmf.syracuse.edu slash entrepreneurship website is a great place to start. But as we said, do not self-select out. If you have questions, either send an email through the form or pick up the phone, whatever you prefer and chat with our entrepreneurship team. If you're somebody who's on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with any of our team, including me. We share a lot of things that are happening about IVMF. We also have some great recorded webinars. If you just want to explore a little bit about our programs, we actually recorded one very recently and it has all of the upcoming programs in it. So that can be another way that you can look at it. We will be, we have events around the country periodically. Jen mentioned, BYs in mm -hmm. Jacksonville later this year. Applications are open for that right now. But we but look out for the other events that we have going on. Connect with us through social media and LinkedIn. We're around. Explore our website a little. But honestly, I think the best way is just to put your hand up, whether it's via email or a phone call, and say, hey, I am interested in this. If we aren't the right fit for right, right, right now, we aren't afraid to say so as Jen said, like when, when we don't feel like we need to have you do things only with us. I love the collaborative nature of just the approach that you all take, because I think it's so important in this space to, to recognize that no, nobody is going to be everything in every situation. And what I love is all the partnerships that you all have created to allow you to very easily just sort of slide someone over to the, to the better resource for that particular need that they have recognizing full well, they'll probably end up doing something with IVMF and probably something else because there's just so many combinations to get you where you need to be. Um, so I, I just, I, I love the conversation and I love that I still, I learn things again. See, I told you like the onion keeps giving because every time I have a conversation with someone at IVMF, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that either. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's, if you have been running for a business for a while, you might find our Coalition for Veteran-Owned Business or CVOB could be something that you want to join. That's actually a program I lead. We also have a buy military-owned shopping guide. So as you move through mm -hmm. later this year, we're looking for places to buy from. We're not the only one out there, but we are. We have an extraordinary range of goods and services. A lot of businesses come there to find suppliers. It is routinely the most visited page on our website in the final two months of the year. We're gearing up to prepare for our gift guide this year. So if you have a business that, and it doesn't have to be a product-based business, we have a lot of services listed on there, submit your business, submit your product or service to the Buy Military Owned Shopping Guide through the IVMF website. And that's another way. And you don't have to have gone mm -hmm. through any of our programs to join either the CBOB or um, the Buy Military Owned Shopping Guide. It's just another way to connect with us. No, there's, yeah, there's just so many. I was going to, I was going to tell a quick little there's story. So much. <laughs> there's so much. But when I was debating about, do I apply? Do I not? What do, you know, how do I spend my time? Because I think the challenge as a business owner is your time is really valuable. And so if you're giving your time in something that isn't actually moving the business forward, it, it better be worth it. <laughs> So I would encourage folks to talk to people, you know, that have attended things and figure out what did they like, what worked for them. Um, because I think sometimes we, you know, leaning on our, in the military space, right. Leaning, <laughs> leaning on people who've been there before is our superpower. So I think, and I think that's great advice. And one of the things that we love to hear, and we know with VWISE, are the people that have gone through VWISE are very honest about how mm -hmm. they found it. And it is a program that we iterate. So we do take all of your survey, the surveys that people fill in, we take those seriously. We have an entire measurement and evaluation team who works through these and makes sure that we're keeping on track and that we're offering the best training that we possibly can and we're connecting you to the best people. We do have a number of professors from Syracuse University who come with us and come to VWISE and they are out, I mean, they're really, they're <laughs> fun, they're lecture, they're classes are incredibly engaging and we know that they've got a tough audience right <laughs> because if they weren't then they wouldn't be able to keep coming back i think at the same time especially with vys 
the thing that was powerful for me as a participant at VWAYS is I'd never been in a room with 350 other military connected women before. Mm -hmm. And there was something really powerful about being in a space where it was encouraged for you to just dream whatever your dreams were and to see some of the other businesses that came out of that are extraordinary. I mean, there are businesses yeah. that came out of my cohort of VYs that are multi, more than multi-million dollar, tens of millions of dollars in valuation businesses. But then there are other people who, it's not always about the value. So <laughs> please don't get hung up on that. I think yeah. what's going to be powerful is, are you able to create a, a situation, a life for yourself and your family that works for you and your family and what your values are? And that's the bottom line whatever that looks like is what's important at the end of the day. No, for sure. It's your journey. <laughs> Absolutely. I really appreciate you spending some time with us, Anna, and helping walk us through. I'm going to try to put as many of the links as we can in the show notes for some of the programs and the application and some of the things you've referenced. But okay. if folks aren't finding it, I know they'll find everything they need through the website. And if not, they can use that contact option to be able to just connect to a person that can help walk them through. So Thank you for laying it out so well. <laughs> we pulled a lot of the onion back today, but I'm grateful for your time and for all that you all do. I'm so grateful for the way in which you share such good resources with our community. And if I can speak for other listeners in saying that, hopefully yeah. I can. Thank you, Anna. Well, I hope, I hope this is the first of many conversations, but thank you so much. Always. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the With Pride and Grip podcast. We're so grateful to our guests for sharing their stories and expertise with us. And we're grateful to you, our listeners, for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And we always appreciate you sharing us with a friend or leaving a kind review. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us on social media under at Pride and Grit or on our website, prideandgrit.com. Until next time, please remember you're not alone on this journey and it is our privilege to walk alongside you.